hello friends welcome back to another video of unix tips and tricks so in last video we saw how to set up the passwordless authentication from putty to any of the unix servers in this video we are going to do the passwordless authentication from a ssh client on the server to another server so we'll be seeing that and we'll be seeing more of inside what happens when we set up the passwordless authentication okay so let's start so to start with i have part on my all three machines that is ubuntu 02 ubuntu 03 and ubuntu 01 so most of it i'll be using ubuntu 02 and i'll be using these two also in the demo so the first command in order to set up the passwordless authentication is to create the key pair and the command is ssh keygen so this command uh, generally uh, gets installed by default when you install ssh client on the unix servers so when you run this command without any options by default it creates the rsa key pair so if you see here it is creating rsa key pair and it is asking where to save your file so we'll leave that default so it has created the directory because it was not existing for this user so .sss directory is where it will store your keys okay and it is asking for passphrase so if you want to give a passphrase like uh, input it was asking for a passwords passphrase so if you want to give it you can give it or you can leave it blank so i'm just leaving it blank okay so it has created the keys and now it is saying that i have saved in this key and this public key so the private key and the public key on dot ssh path so let's go to this path so we are already on the home so we'll go to dot ssh and see what files are created so if you see here both the files are there okay rsa and dsa are the algorithms which have been uh, in use from long time and nowadays those are not considered as safe as the new keys algorithms are so apart from rsa dsa we have ecdsa which is pretty common in use so i have created uh, the default key rsa to just show you if you give it without any option but i'm gonna create it with the ecdsa which will be we will be using further in the demo so let's create a key pair with hyphen t and we'll give ecdsa so this is considered more secure now and which is a new algorithm and we can give the bytes so it takes 256 bytes uh, 384 bytes or 521 bytes so the more bytes more secure or the more uh, encrypted key you are having so i'll be using 521 bytes and let's hit enter so again it is asking the same thing to save your keys so i'm going with no passphrase again and see it has created and now if we see oops now if we see the content so it has created two more keys uh, ecdsa and ecdsa.pub so that is private and public key now how to copy this key to another server so there uh, is a simple command to copy this to another server so let's do that through copy id so this is the command ssh copy id and we give the key name here like ecdsa.pub that is the public key which we want to uh, copy to our other server and then we can give the username and the host name so i'm going to use the same user so i'll not give username because by default when you use ssh it takes the same user okay so i'm just going to give ubuntu 03 here and let's do it and it is asking for the host key addition so we'll get give yes so see here it by default took user one so let's give the password okay so it has added my key from ubuntu 02 to ubuntu 03 so now let's try to log into ubuntu 03 okay see it didn't even ask for the password and because we are using the same user it didn't even ask for the user so let's see what is my home directory here okay so if you see here 
my home directory on these three machines on Ubuntu 02 I am getting my home directory from my NFS export if you have not seen my video of a storage management I had created a NFS export from my Ubuntu 03 machine and uh, created home directories here so here I am getting the LDAP home directory from NSF NFS export from Ubuntu 03 which is mounted as home user 1 if you see here here also it is the same so this is the IP of Ubuntu 03 so this and this is having the same home directory eventually from the export because I'm using the same user and I have defined the home directory for that user on the LDAP which is this export right so we are going to see how that eases our job when we are setting up the passwordless authentication but now here in Ubuntu 03 if you see this is a path on the root file system itself so okay now if you see the content here of .ssh directory it has created a while authorized keys from your public key so if you see this file it would be the same key which we have here so if we do uh, this so see here so this is the same key which is the public key on this server which we just created so we copied that public key to this Ubuntu 03 server to make the passwordless authentication work okay now because this server Ubuntu 01 server and Ubuntu 02 server share the same home directory I'm not gonna use the copy ID command rather what I can do I can simply create a authorized keys file so let me create authorized key file here and let me add this key which was added to Ubuntu 03 server when we use the copy or we can just take it from the public key of uh, here too which we just saw so we can copy this or we can copy this either ways okay and this file by default gets created with the permission 664 so we need to change this permission to 600 okay done so now if we try to log into Ubuntu 01 so we have not used SC, uh, SSH copy ID to Ubuntu 01 but let's try to log in because we created authorized keys with the public key here on Ubuntu 02 server and we are going to log into Ubuntu 01 and it is asking for confirmation hit yes so it is taking a while because my home directory on Ubuntu 01 is coming from LDAP so when I'm trying to authenticate it is trying to go to Ubuntu 03 server to check my home directory and mount it using the NFS export so now it, we are logged in to Ubuntu 01 server from Ubuntu 02 without copying the public key to Ubuntu 01 actually right but we just created the authorized keys on the Ubuntu 01 server itself and we are able to log in why because we are having the same home directory and if we go to SSH we are going to see the same content what we have on Ubuntu 01 if you see here it's the same right authorized keys is there so this makes work very easy when you are having a lot of servers and you want to jump from one server to other and do your work so right now I'm on Ubuntu 01 if I want to go back to Ubuntu 02 and log in from here so that is also gonna work the same way so if you see here see I'm logged in from Ubuntu 01 to Ubuntu 02 without any password so this will only work when you are having the same home directory mounted over all the servers so you just need to create a key pair you have to create the authorized keys you have to put your public key on the authorized keys and have your private key on dot ssh as you would do for any other passwordless authentication uh, setup okay okay so now let's see what we have here other than authorized keys and the keys so this file known host so let's see the content of known host now so if we see the known host what it has been doing it has been adding the keys 
here for other servers wherever we are logging in so if you see here this is a key for the host where you are trying to log in from this host so next time you try to log in it will not gonna be asking so whenever we are hitting yes here like this this is what it is doing it is adding a key on your known host so that it knows that you are trying to connect to a right machine so why it does so so it is kind of a security feature uh, which Unix implements on uh, logging in so that you use a key mechanism from one server to other and if someone tries to intercept and tries to change the IP of a server you would not be able to log in or you would see a warning that this server was logged in or this server was using this key this IP earlier now it has changed so this is a security feature which is by default enabled on all servers okay so that's why we are seeing all the keys but if you see here you're not able to identify which key is from which host okay so if you want to verify that you can run this command ssh key scan and just give the host name okay now if you see here the key here is the same which is here but another thing if you notice that this key this key this key this key all keys are same and why is that that is because we are using a virtual machine and we have cloned the machines so the key which was there on the first machine that is copied over to the other two clone machines and you are seeing six entries while we have logged in only to two servers right so this is because you have logged in first to ubuntu 03 so there are two entries for ubuntu 03 why there are two i'll be just explaining and then we logged into Ubuntu 02 from this server, uh, sorry, Ubuntu 01 from this server. So these two entries are for Ubuntu 01. And then remember, we switched from Ubuntu 01 server to Ubuntu 02 back to test our uh, authorized keys on our shared home directory, right? So that's why we have six entries. Now in Ubuntu by default, if you see these two entries right here on every key these mean the host name but that is also encrypted by default and you are not able to identify which key is for which server right so that is the default setting and we have two entries because what it does it actually adds one entry with the IP and one entry with the host name so let's see if we are right on that okay so there is a command to delete the key so we have six keys just remember now let's try to delete the key so ssh keychain hyphen r and and let's give the server name ubuntu 01 okay and let's try to delete a key for ubuntu 01 server and let's give the known host okay so this is the command if you want to delete a key for a specific host this is also very useful when you get the host check warning that this host was something different and you know that server was changed ip was changed or something happened to that server then or the server was rebuilt uh, those are the scenarios where you will see the change in the host keys so you can use this command to simply delete the host key for that specific server okay so let's run it so it is saying ubuntu one found line three so it, it it is telling you that out of those six keys line three was for ubuntu 01 which matches up right first we logged in for ubuntu 03 so two lines for that and then we logged in for ubuntu 01 so that was the line three okay but if you see uh, known host here you are still you are still having five lines and if we try to just give the IP for this server so let's give the IP which is 15 for Ubuntu 01 server so 
what it is saying it is saying there was another key at line 3 so after deleting the line 3 is for the IP for this same server right and it has deleted it so now if we see we should be able to see four lines so that confirms the theory which I was saying that there were two entries one for the host name and one for the IP in the known host right so that way you can delete a key now it is not recommended but if you want that you uh, you see the host name in the host file known host file you create a config file in your .ssh and just add this entry okay so now it is done now let's try to log into ubuntu 01 again okay again confirmation okay we are logged in with the key okay let's log out and let's see the content of known host again so if you see the last line here now it has not added two lines it has added just one line where it added the host name and the ip and the key and now you know that this key is this specific key is for this host name okay before i move on to my last item where this key exactly exists this host key so if you see the content of etc ssh here are the keys so every host if they are created separately they will have all these key pairs so if you see rsa key pair dsa key pair ecdsa key pair and ed25519 key pair okay so all these key pairs so depending on what kind of ssh key you are trying to use it will give the key pair from that server to your known host and it will add it there right so if we see the content of this file it will be the same what we are seeing on the etc host if you see here so this is the same key what we are seeing here correct now in entire video when i was trying to log into my machines for the first time every time it was asking do you want to add the server to your known host right so when you're running uh, automation or running a script on multiple hundreds of servers and you are trying to log in for the first time on those servers it becomes very difficult to hit yes every time and that is not something which we would like to do so how to avoid that so there is a simple option which we need to give so before we see that let's empty our known host so that it considers that we are logging for the first time on these servers so the option is ssh hyphen o and strict host key checking okay this is the option and if you give something like this and just give the server name and hit enter see it did not ask for the confirmation to you okay it simply added the key to your known host you see the warning see it did not even ask right and if we see the content of our known host now the key is added here so like I said this is a security feature and you should not disable it unless you are pretty sure that all the servers you are trying to log in those are on your domain and they are known to you right so this is how you would avoid hitting yes every time for each servers when you are automating something and you are trying to log in for the first time on any of the server and typing this every time on ssh is something which we can avoid to using alias or your own commands but i'm not going to show that in this video because i'm going to take that up in my next video how to use alias and create your own commands so for this video that was all thank you thank you for watching